The Khmer Rouge once ruled Cambodia. Its oppressive policies wiped out the nation's rich culture. Performances were banned, and most artists and musicians were killed. Today, a local circus is sparking an artistic revival by turning street kids into world-class acrobats, and at the same time, pulling them out of poverty. I'm Steve Chow. This week on 101 East, we go backstage into the lives of Cambodia's circus performers. In the show, I played a part of a devil's spirit that possesses the body of a disfigured man. The man just wants to fit in and be a part of the community. But the villagers reject and abuse him. The gods answer his prayers and turn him into a beautiful woman. The beautiful woman then takes revenge on the villagers. 25-year-old Nerf Australia is living out her childhood dream. She's a star at Far, a Cambodian circus troupe in the city of Siem Reap. I first saw a circus performance in school when I was a little girl. It was amazing how they moved their bodies. After that, I knew I wanted to be like them. Based on traditional folk tales, tonight's performance is a story of rejection, revenge and reconciliation, with a good dose of humour. Australia is known for her contortionist skills, and this move never fails to take the crowd's breath away. The circus is one of the biggest attractions in town, but it doesn't just entertain people. It's a lifeline for these performers, who have one thing in common. They were once hungry street kids who had to work to stay alive. When I was seven or eight years old, I spent half of my day in school and the other half selling cakes with my mother. My family was very poor. In the early years, I trained and performed just to feed myself. We had so many siblings living together, seven boys and four girls. Australia grew up in the province of Batambong, three hours drive away. Grinding poverty here drives countless children to work on the streets, picking through trash to be sold for recycling. Many families rely on everyone working hard to scrape by. Australia's father died of ill health when she was very young, leaving her mother to raise 11 children. Help came from a local school that provides free education and meals. It became a second home for Australia and an older sister. I went too far, so there will be fewer mouths to feed at home. I studied, slept and ate in school. Funded by circus revenue and donations, it offers all the subjects you would find in a public school, but is best known for its circus training. Inside the gym, there is no selection process or age restriction for the kids. Anyone game enough to take a tumble can come. Body bending was the most difficult for me. I'm not a natural talent. I'm a normal person, but I loved it. I trained long and hard to be a contortionist. I often cried when my teacher bent me. My back hurt, my bones hurt whenever I trained to bend my body or to do splits. My trainer knew how and where to bend me safely, but it was so painful, I was left in tears.
Sreliak's mother, Som Savern, has been working in the school kitchen since her husband died 10 years ago. She is grateful the school rescued her kids from a life on the streets. The school has helped poor people like me and my neighbours. Just one free meal a day for the kids eases the burden so much. Som Savern has fed thousands of hungry children during her time here and watched them grow up. She misses them when they leave, none more than her daughter, Srelia. I miss her a lot. We speak on the phone, but I hardly get to see her. I've never seen her show in Siem Reap. When she was here in Batambong, I used to watch every single show she performed in school. Every performance made me happy. Now there is another generation of a family here, her 10-year-old granddaughter, Chenda. She's very good with the trapeze, and she bends her body well. Everyone says she's very playful. Today, Chenda's teacher wants the kids to get used to performing in front of an audience. They each take turns to perform for the class. It's all pretty impressive, but teacher Heng Hood has high standards. ហើយអត់មិនឯងអត់មិនក៏យើងប្រឹងលេងយើងក៏ថាការសម្ដែង <laughs> <laughs> Heng <laughs> 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 Hood is strict, but the kids love her. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take a few more years before the young ones can juggle like these teenagers training in the school's big top. 16-year-old Nerves Ray Line is a spitting image of her older sister. My sister Australia is the contortionist. I fell in love with the circus when she brought me here to watch her train. She's my role model. She's part of a youth team gearing up for their first public performance in a few days' time. They've been training together every day for several months now and can't wait to show off what they can do. Those who do well here eventually become professional performers in Siem Reap. They even get to travel overseas. I want to be a professional. I hope to perform in Siem Reap and all over the world, like my sister. Sri Line is the female lead for the students' show. Its themes reflect Cambodia's changing society. In the story, her character's lover returns home after working in the city. She doesn't like how he's turned from a humble farm boy to a flashy city slicker. And he has to try and win her heart again. The male lead is 19-year-old Sri Chan Pitu. His friends call him Long. Long and Sri Line grew up together. Their friends tease them about how realistic their stage romance is. What about in real life? Do you go out? We are tap tong, but no can cry, and the lanky, the pain, and the lanky, 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 and the lanky,
vừa vừa tới cặp chặt tóc hạ nhưng mà quạt thành kia bình ta không riêng này mình tái cài đứa mình được phép thầm đa chân tứ cài đứa ở thầm đa As for whether they will get back together in the future, <laughs> their trainer, Nam Chantaon, is better known by his nickname, Brandy. <laughs> He's one of the stars in Siam Reap but he's taking a break to train the teenagers here in Batambong. Brandy hopes to teach full-time after his performing days are over. His students hope so too. We were unmotivated and no one cared if we trained or not. Brandy discussed it with the teachers and picked us to form a team for the show. He guided us to the level we're at today. He's so busy, but he still takes time to care for us. It's two days to their first big performance. For the first time, the team completes a full rehearsal. It lasts over an hour. The big top was hot and stuffy, and they're worn out. Brandy gives a pep talk to lift their confidence and reminds them to focus on safety. What worries me was how they rushed when they became tired. I always tell them, when you're tired, focus on your breathing. It helps their acting, concentration, and makes them more careful. They need to understand the rhythm of breathing and how to follow it. The next day, they nail their tricks one after another. Spirits are high and are looking forward to the evening's full dress rehearsal. Brandy is satisfied with their technique but wants them to express themselves better. We've yet to train as actors, so we're a little stiff and not quite there when we perform. <laughs> They have a quick bite after the practice. They're pumped after such a good rehearsal. But Shreyline knows they've got to get it right each and every time. I'm nervous and excited. Even if you train every day, you can still make mistakes. Sure enough, that evening, the full dress rehearsal goes horribly wrong. They make one mistake after another. School staff and some villagers are here for a preview. It's a small audience, but the team isn't used to it. They slip up again and again, struggling with moves that they pulled off so well in training. Shreyline recovers as the show goes on, but Long is having a nightmare. They saw the audience and became nervous and frustrated. And the worst part, they performed so stiffly. They just went step by step, from here to there. They lost the feel for it. I was exhausted, so I lost concentration. I was so nervous, and my performance level dropped. I was much better yesterday. 
hay về trên mọi xoa hấp dương này bà ở non xa chẳng dương mà xin là dương ọt ban ọt ban kết ác luôn ai nên tế nhưng cứ thầm đó cứ thầm chạy cái tí chạy cái tí bắt ở hơi à à vậy để để chi trả xong đây bao dương nâng dương cuốn dế chẳng khi mà dương hot tình kỳ tam bất dương lấy như miên phê là xong ra miên phê đây dương mình thả ọt miên phê đây dương lấy không mà không cái nào mà không thì thôi dương bắt cục ông hơi dương à phải chạy cái tí dương như rừng There's a lot of pressure riding on Long. His family is pinning their hopes on his circus career. Home is a wooden hut in a run-down neighborhood near the school. Long's mother had 15 children. Nine died from illnesses because they couldn't afford proper nutrition and medical treatment. From when they were very young, every day Long and his siblings collected garbage for recycling just to help make ends meet. We are a poor family, very poor. The children fell sick often and the older ones had to work as garbage collectors to help look after the family. They earned money to buy medicine and rice. When Far started the school, it offered courses in the arts, painting and circus. They let the kids choose a skill. Their oldest sister learned to paint and now has a job to help the family. Long's father earns an irregular income as a drummer at weddings and funerals. If he does well, he can help the whole family with his income, especially those who are jobless. If he makes it as a pro, Long's starting salary will be more than $400 a month, four times the average wage in rural Cambodia. That's why he stopped collecting trash two years ago to focus on training. When I turn professional in the future, I will help mum out. I'll build a new house and buy her all the good food she likes to eat. I will practice hard every day until our team is so good that everyone cheers for it. It's the day of the teenager's first public performance. There's a full house to impress as they take their first steps to becoming professionals. The early cheers settle the nerves. They grow in confidence and turn on the style. The audience love it. Long's parents are very proud. I never thought my son could do all that. I'm excited that he's doing so well. I'm happy to see my son perform. I'm very happy. After the show, the team has an important visitor. Kundet and his friends founded a school in 1994 after returning home from a refugee camp following the fall of the Khmer Rouge. They believed in using the arts to heal the wounds of the war and to empower the rural poor. Our art scene flourished as far back as the 12th and 13th century. Many musicians, writers and singers blossomed here, especially in the 60s. But in the 70s, the civil war wiped out the arts and killed the performers. The Khmer Rouge destroyed everything and the arts vanished. We want to use the arts as a vehicle for our youth to understand our national identity and the spirit it represents. That night, Line goes home to one of very few houses in the neighborhood with concrete walls and cable TV. It was built thanks to the earnings of her two older sisters from performing at the circus. We used to live in a rented wooden hut that leaked when it rained. Water came in from above and below. We couldn't even find a dry spot to have a meal. I often pray for my children's happiness, for my family to be safe and free from illness. 
And she has a prayer of her own. One day I would like to see my daughter Streliak perform. I hear her show in Siem Reap is amazing. They have good music, nice lighting and a big crowd. I was happy for her when I heard that. I used to hear old people say, make a wish when you see shooting stars. So I did. I wished very hard that one day I'll be able to ride in a plane and perform for the circus all over the world. My childhood wish has come true. Nerve Australia has traveled to Europe and across Asia with a circus. But she knows this won't last forever. Age and injuries catch up with all circus performers in the end. An old injury haunts her. In 2007, she broke her back during training and couldn't perform for a year. Every time I feel something there, I worry and pray that it's OK, because I want to keep performing. I'm not in pain. The doctor gave me the all clear, but it's always at the back of my mind. To prepare for life after the circus, Sri Liak started English classes in Siem Reap a few months ago. Today, a classmate is helping her with lessons she missed due to training. Yesterday, we were in the city of Aga. We saw the tech mach, mach, mach. I want to speak English because I want to communicate with foreigners. It will also help me find other jobs. Any job these days requires you to speak English. Australia rents a small unit not far from the big top with her husband, Rohan Vichika, a reserve performer and a stage manager at the circus. If my English is good enough, I hope to work in communications at the school where the children perform. If not, I want to be a circus trainer because I love the craft. The couple are saving up to build a house and start a family in Batambong. They've already bought a piece of land near her mother. I think a lot about my mother. I told her, one day, I will bring you to visit Siam Reap. But she said no. She's never been here. I want her to see the show, but she always says she's busy with work. Tonight, she's in for a surprise. We've arranged for special guests to visit from Batambong. As the team gets ready for the next show, Sreliak's mother and sister make their way in. Her mom will finally get to see her perform at the Siam Reap Big Top. Backstage, I ask Sreliak whom she hopes to see most in a stands tonight. Wrong answer, but she might like this surprise better. Her sister and mom are excited. They've heard so much about this performance. The lights go out and it's showtime. Australia doesn't see them in the shadows. But one of her teammates spots her mother and tells Australia between scenes. The secret's out, so this time, when Australia executes her signature move, it is extra special. I didn't manage to bring Beyonce, but uh, I brought your mom. Oh, <laughs> I hope it's still a nice surprise. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Australia's mother has finally seen her perform with a big crowd and the stunning lights she always hears about. While her sister Sri Lang has had a taste of what the future holds if she keeps working hard. There is no sign of Beyonce though, at least for tonight. But one can never say never in Cambodia's Circus of Hope. <laughs>